Starting a business is hard work. It isn't for everyone, but if it is for you and you wanna give it a shot, then this is everything I wish someone had told me when I got started. When I finished school, I went straight into freelance video production and I've been building and adapting that business over the last seven years. I've learned so much along the way, made a ton of mistakes and been able to see how a lot of other businesses have been built from the ground up. So this is everything that I would tell 18 year old me if I could start again. So three categories that I wanna jump into, you as a person, your business idea, and then practically actually getting started and moving forwards. Let's dive in first with you as a person. Before we even talk about your idea, we have to start with you. Starting and running a business is totally different to being a student, totally different to having a nine to five job. You've got nobody in charge of you, no structures other than the ones that you create. It takes some serious self-motivation. And so before even getting started, it's worth asking yourself the question, are you someone who's able to sit down and work hard at creating something when there's nobody telling you what to do, no specific framework that you have to follow and no right answers to anything. Some people love that and some people hate that, but it's worth thinking through. It's also really important to recognize that starting a business is not the same as just being really good at a specific skill. There's this great book that's definitely worth reading for anyone thinking about this called The E-Myth. It basically goes through this idea that a lot of people try and start businesses around their particular skill or their trade, and they quickly realize that to build something that works, you need to be willing to learn and figure out a long list of business skills that are usually totally different to the product or the service that you want to offer. The great thing is that we live in an age where we can learn pretty much anything from pretty much any location for pretty much no money. Make the most of that. One of the key questions to figure out early on is whether you wanna build a business on your own or with a co-founder or a partner. There's obviously pros and cons of both, but it really comes down to whether you think you'd prefer being the one who makes all the decisions and holding all the responsibility for everything, which can sometimes be lonely, but it gives you the most flexibility to do things the way you want, or would you prefer sharing the responsibilities and the decisions with someone else? It's worth thinking that one through. The other small question is, are you the kind of person who has long-term perspective? Like anything significant, building and growing a business takes time. Lots of new businesses don't make any profit at all in the first year. Things might not grow as quickly as you'd like to. And you've got to figure out if you'll be able to stick with it and put in the effort that it takes to grow something slower over a longer period of time. Okay, so you've decided you're the kind of person who would enjoy and thrive in the world of growing a business. Let's move on to the business idea. The starting point when thinking about a new business is what problem are you trying to solve? People pay money to fix problems. That's pretty much the only reason we buy anything. Before planning anything at all, a great starting point is a sentence that clearly articulates the problem that you're setting out to solve and how you're going to solve it. This doesn't need to be groundbreaking. It doesn't need to be a totally unique idea, but it does need to be able to occupy a unique specific chunk of the market. So it needs to do something slightly different or slightly better than all the other options. Once you have a clear idea of the problem and the solution, the next thing is the audience. Ultimately, if you target everyone, you reach no one. So you've got to figure out who you're going to try and reach and why they might want what you specifically have to offer. It's useful to get an idea of competition as well. Who out there is offering the most similar thing to what you're going to offer? How can you stand apart from them? Do you offer it for better value, for higher quality, to a slightly different audience? If you notice other people doing the same thing that you want to do, don't be put off by that. If anything, that just proves that people clearly want to buy the kind of product and service that you're offering. But try and figure out how you could do it in a slightly different way, a slightly better way. Trends and fads are really important to think about as well. You might have this amazing idea that everyone wants to buy, people are running towards you asking for it, but actually it's unlikely to still be popular six months from now. Can you imagine your idea having some legs that might take it into the future? Because it needs to last, it needs to work long term. It's not a deal breaker, but it's also a good idea to be aware of the scalability of your business idea. Is it something that if it goes really well, you could continue to offer more and more of it? Or is it the kind of thing that you'll quickly hit a wall and not really be able to grow any further? The last thing in the idea category is probably the most important thing. Will people out there pay money for the thing that you want to provide? If they won't, 
It might be a really great idea, but it won't be a business. So be as confident as you can that people will want to buy from you before you invest a load of time and effort into starting the business. Are there similar products or services out there that demonstrate the idea will work? Can you think up a list of people in real life that you know already that might want to buy from you? And don't miss out on actually just talking to friends and family about your idea as well. Bring it up with other people, see what they say. There isn't the time to go into it fully here, but in the UK, a lot of people don't realise there's this £1,000 a year trading allowance for self-employed work or for side hustles. Essentially, you can test your idea out, charge a bit of money, and as long as it doesn't cross the £1,000 boundary, you can just do it casually without setting up anything official or permanent. I'll stick a link in the description. Go read a little bit more about that because most people don't even realise that exists. So, you're here. You've decided this is for you. You've got a great idea that you think might work. What do you do now? Well, the boring answer, the really boring answer, before we get onto business stuff, definitely think about whether it might be worth going and working for a similar, small, medium-sized business before getting started for yourself. I know that sounds boring. About 60% of small businesses fail in the first three years. And so going and getting a job, even just for six or 12 months in a similar world, will give you so much grounding and so much experience that you can lean on later on. You don't need to do that. I didn't do that, but it is really helpful for a lot of people. Okay, business, let's go. First question, do you set up as a sole trader or as a limited company? They're the two main ways of doing small business in the UK. Again, there's loads of detail here and there are hundreds of videos and blog posts and articles that explain the pros and cons really well. But my general recommendation to most people, if you're getting started, do everything properly, do it all by the books, take it seriously, but begin as a sole trader. If you've done all the other bits properly, it's really easy to become a limited company further down the road if you want to. But the sole trader thing is just so much easier to set up and to stop if you decide it's not for you. It's also cheaper and easier to run the accountancy side of things. And so when you're in early days, it almost always makes most sense to begin as a sole trader. But there's pros and cons. There's different tax reasons why you might go either way. So go and do some research about that. Most things from this point on need your business to have a name. So start there. You want something that's memorable, that you feel proud of telling people about. There's so many things to think about when it comes to names. But whatever you do, make sure it's pretty unique. You want people to be able to find your business quite easily online. So a good starting point is just to Google the name that you're thinking of, see what comes up. But there are a few important places to check when it comes to naming your business. Companies House is the website that has information about every limited company running in the UK. So it's worth checking that your name hasn't been taken on there, even if you don't want a limited company just yet, because you might further down the road. The other two key places are social media. So check whether your name has been taken on social media platforms that you might want. And if it has, is there a good alternative that you can come up with? And then the second thing is checking that there's a web domain available for your website. So there are websites like GoDaddy and 123reg that let you go on and check what's available by the domain, the .com, the .co.uk, the .co, the .org, whatever it is that you want as soon as you've decided on a name. If you're a limited company, you need to set up a business bank account. Sole traders don't need to do that, but it makes everything 10 times easier if you do. So the first thing that I would do, once setting up the official stuff, which you can go and read up, setting up a sole tradership, setting up a limited company, once doing that, go and set up a business bank account. When it comes to accountants and money tracking, most limited companies should probably get an accountant from day one. Sole traders can and probably should try and get by for at least the first year or two without paying for an accountant. Not because you don't need it, but because it's really useful as a small business owner to get your head around all the tax stuff while it's not too complicated. But you do still need to keep a record of all the money coming in and all the money going out. Because when it comes to paying tax as a self-employed person through your self-assessment, you need to be able to explain to the tax man how much profit you made after taking out all of your expenses. So you can just track all of this in a spreadsheet but there are some really good and relatively cheap bits of software that connect to your bank account and allow you to keep track of everything, do your tax returns, just keep it nice and easy. Once all of that's in place, get yourself a basic website. There are loads of tools out there online to help you build a really simple one and you can always improve it further down the road to just start somewhere. Start with something that you can point people to and start bringing traffic in from. Get a business email address so that people can contact you and set up on whatever social media platforms you want. If your business is location-based, 
then it's also really worth setting up on Google My Business, which just means that you'll appear on Google Maps when people type in your kind of business in the area. And it also makes you come up a little bit higher on Google search results. Once your email, website and bank account are all set up, you're ready to start taking in work. Going back to the point earlier about having a sentence that sums up the problem and your solution, it's really useful here to have a 20, 30 second explanation that you could just give to anyone you meet about what you do and why your business exists. If you can explain it really simply, people are way more likely to remember what you do and tell other people about it. And on that point, tell everyone you can what you do. If you have a network of 50, 60, 100 people that you can tell about your business, then you suddenly have like a massive marketing team of friends and family who will bring you up if they ever meet someone who needs the kind of thing that you have to offer. At this stage, it's a great idea to set some goals. They don't need to be anything too complicated or too detailed, but it's helpful to have some idea where you're aiming. So think about where you might want your business to be 12 months from now, two years from now and start trying to develop some ideas of how you might reach that point. And then just document the journey. Keep a journal, start a YouTube channel documenting what you learn along the way. You're gonna learn so much as you go. So definitely don't worry about getting everything perfectly fine tuned before you start. But on the days that are a little bit harder, it's nice to look back and be like, oh yeah, I learned that six months ago and I'm actually in a much better place now. Things are going well. But just start moving, see where it takes you, see what you learn. The other thing is to have a couple of friends around you who you can bounce ideas off of as well. Even if you're running this thing on your own, we usually come up with our best ideas when we share thoughts with other people. So don't try and do this secretly. Have a few people involved in what it is you're thinking about. And there you go, you're running a business. The phrase to hold on to at this point is earning or learning. Either be doing your work and getting paid or spend time learning more stuff to help you keep on growing and becoming better and better. There are definitely days where things won't be as busy, particularly at the start. And so use that time to build up all the other skills that will be useful further down the road. Photography, writing, web design, social media, graphics, networking, accounting, finance. They're all useful skills for every business owner. So make the most of the time when it's early days and it's not always that busy. Stay consistent. Business is a long game. So take it slow, take it steady, and it'll be an exciting journey. Hopefully this video has been helpful. Let me know in the comments if there are any questions at all or any of the 500 topics that we've covered that I can go into in a little bit more depth. I'm not an expert in all of this, but I'm really happy to share the things that have helped me grow over the last six, seven years of starting and building a small business in the UK. But thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you again soon.